James Kaufman, World News Report. Today, today is September 12th, 2023, 11 a.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a surprise geomagnetic storm. We'll take a look at the possible causes in a second, but currently all four of our KP indexes, our Boulder, our Fredericksburg, our Estimated Planetary Index, and our College Index all indicate that we're in a geomagnetic storm. Both our Boulder and Fredericksburg Index say we're in a G1 geomagnetic storm, a KP5. Our estimated planetary KP index is at a 5.33. Also a G1 geomagnetic storm. This has been over the last three hours. And finally, our college index comes in at a 6. A little bit stronger storm there. Now, this is NASA's release. A geomagnetic storm is occurring now. An unexpected coronal mass ejection hit Earth's magnetic field today, September 12th at 1237 UTC time, sparking a G1 class geomagnetic storm. There's a chance that the storm could intensify to a category G2 as Earth moves deeper into the coronal mass ejection's wake. High latitude skywatchers should be alert for auroras this evening. That's the release. All right now, before we try to figure out what the cause of these coronal mass ejections that just hit us were, let's take a look at today's action. We've had two large M flares already impact Earth. At around 418 UTC time to 442 UTC time, with an M1.9 solar flare come out of sunspot AR3425, directly Earth-facing in the northern hemisphere. One of the sunspots we've been watching, actually. Uh, not a complex sunspot at this time. Then later on in the day, at 647 to 707 UTC time, we had an M2.5, seen here, come out of sunspot AR3423, also in the northern hemisphere and also directly Earth-facing. Now, when we take a look at GOES X-ray to try to find out what might have impacted Earth, the only thing I can come up with, the only thing I can come up with, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, would be one of these first two M flares here. They were very light, and I will show y'all that on the Goodard uh, is what spiral right now. I believe those to be our cul uh, culprits. I see nothing, nothing else possible it could be. Let's take a look. Now over to Iswa, you can see the two flares there coming off the sun, one after another, one, two, and those are the two CMEs that were currently being hit by. I suspected that they would be Earth-bound since they were Earth-facing, but NASA did not agree. I guess they changed their mind after the fact, as usual. So they look very light. They came in at, well, M-flares, but not extremely strong M-flares. Again, NASA did say that they could cause at least a G2 geomagnetic storm, but that would be our best and only bet where those coronal mass ejections, however light they are, came from. So we will keep an eye on those and see if the storm intensifies at all. And if anyone's able to get any Aurora Borealis shots this evening, a lot of the times in the southern states you can point your camera north and even though you can't see it per your human visual spectrum, your camera may in fact pick up the aurora borealis all right starting out here with our d region absorption prediction center that is going to be believe it or not our largest m flare of the day it doesn't look very strong it popped off over india 
over the Middle East and parts of Africa. We are maintaining a very strong sea flare baseline. We have some more pops, but that was the latest, strongest 2.1 M flare. Now, it didn't look like it registered strong enough to be a 2.1 M flare, but the timing works on it. And, well, we're going to go with it based on the time itself. All right, heading over to the sun, taking a look at the sunspots. The only complex sunspot we have on the disk, earth-facing currently, is 3431, only responsible for a C4.5 at 530 UTC time. The two sunspots that have been giving us heck all day long all right, heading over to HMI Intensigram, taking a look at the sunspots that are currently Earth-facing our solar disk. Let's start with 3431 over here, the only magnetically complex sunspot on the sun Earth-facing. It's only come up with a C4.5 solar flare today. Most of our trouble, all the rest of our trouble, has come from sunspot AR. 3425 and sunspot AR 3423. Those sunspots are not magnetically complex, but they are large sunspot groups and they are earth facing. So, first out of sunspot AR 3425, we've seen a C8.1, or that was followed at 418 by an M1.9. Followed at 431 by an M1.8, really one event. And that was followed by a couple of small C flares, so C3.6 and 3.1 that have just occurred. The other sunspot, AR3423, brought us our largest present of the day, and that would be our M2.5 solar flare which it sure did not appear to be that on our X-ray absorption model. All right, showing you the solar flares so you can get your head around them really quickly. You can see how active AR3425 has been. The two M flares, the M1.9 and 1.8, I believe would be one event based on the timing and how it looks on GOES. And then the only other large sunspot, Coming from AR3423, right here, directly Earth-facing, 647 UTC time. Now, I did want to show you NOAA's KP Index Forecast Breakdown for September 12th, 13th, and 14th. This is the hour that we see the 5, 5.3 and 6 G1 geomagnetic storm. They got it way off, half as strong as it actually was. I don't know where they thought those CMEs were going. I, in fact, said they were headed inbound. All right, heading over to Lasco C3. Lots of action. These are all the flares throughout the day. There's some time taken off of Lasco. But the gist, gist of the thing is, is every single flare was earth-facing. And we had three fairly strong flares that will be inbound with coronal mass ejections in 48 hours. Now, hopefully you've stuck around because the most interesting part is next. Now, even though NASA's Iswa Goodert spiral had those very light coronal mass ejections hitting Earth, ladies and gentlemen, we've been hit by something very strong. Plasma is upwards of 70 centimeters cubed here. 71.55 here. Unbelievable. This is strong as almost any coronal mass ejection that has hit Earth as registered. And this has been ongoing for several hours. Uh, it does look like it might have calmed down. But this was one wallop of a hit. Especially since we were expecting nothing to happen. Hard to believe at some level they could be that wrong about a chrome mass ejection, or was it purposeful? This was a large hit. Uh, 
uh, you know, just as strong as any coronal mass ejection that we've seen over the last several years. I believe that to be because our fields, our magnetosphere, is extremely weak right now. These were both just barely M flares. Imagine if they had been X flares. It'd be lights out, period. You can see Earth's magnetic shields are in the toilet here, running to negative 20 and negative 10. There's no protection whatsoever. And then we can see Earth's magnetic shields were negative 100 here. And we can see the impact and what it actually did here as that last, well, as that last CME hit us. Now we might in fact have another one inbound based on that gooder is with spiral, but we'll have to see. All right, so in summary, we've had two large M flares early today, both directly earth facing. This was a double whammy, the 1.8 followed by the 1.9. You can see the uh, notch right there, followed by the 1.9. And then the 2.6 perhaps, very close to it. Now I believe that the coronal mass ejections hitting currently are these two lighter M flares that occurred early on September 11th, just yesterday. Uh, I believe that they were moving fast enough to get here in about in about 18 to 20 hours. So I do believe that they haven't been given credit as far as uh, the artist's rendition on Iswa. It looks like that they were much stronger than they were made out to be. With that said, God bless each and every one of you guys. Please share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.